Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. Recently, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. And it didn't take us long to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most about the show is the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us right here on Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. All right! We've locked eyes. Could you be the most beautiful chip chip a That's it. Is That's that, all I got. Is that Prince? Yes. So it is relevant. So relevant. So relevant. We'll get to that. But first, first we've got some stuff to discuss. We do? No, I don't think so. We don't have anything to discuss. <laughs> Really? I mean, I discussed The Sopranos with you right now, but... Oh, my God. I love how <laughs> far behind we are on Sopranos. We're just like decades Yeah, we're like behind. almost 30 years behind now. Yeah, I'm finally watching The Sopranos and I'm hooked. Well, I, w- I watched it when it was on and now we're re-watching it and it's... We, 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 we don't want to take up your time. We won't take up your time. We won't take up your time. You might hear like a gabagool here and there, but other than that, we're not going to take your time with The Sopranos. Um, but tune in for our next podcast, which will probably be all Sopranos 30 years too late. I love it. Um, should we play some Bob pun or Max pun? Yes, please. Sticking with that chip chip a theme, the Prince theme. We'll get more into the Prince theme. These are all Prince themed burger puns. Wow. Okay. I love it. So I, I get, I guess I get to sing them. Oh yeah. Okay. Do it. Your first pun is Little Red Bruce get a burger. <laughs> that is so good. Wait, this means that Bob has to have... I'm doing some burger calculations in mm-hmm. my head. This means that Bob has to have had like more than one Prince pun. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they would only do that for this episode. So I feel like I should only say Bob once in this mm-hmm. round. Okay. Um, Max. That is a Bob burger. Do you know what? I was going to say that. <laughs> okay. Your next pun is raspberry filet mignon burger. Um, Max. Yes. Okay. Your next pun is. That was not- really good, by the way. <laughs> I was complimenting you, and you rolled your eyes at me. <laughs> Thank you, because I was just about to. You, you, you. My, my artistry was about to shine. I'm and sorry. You I'll be in. quiet. <laughs> Nothing compares to blue cheese burger. Is that like pear and some gorgonzola burger situation? Oh, I didn't think it's not spelled pear. But yeah, it could have. It could have been pear, but it's it's mostly uh-huh. the blue cheese. I think you. That is Bob. I was going to say Bob because I think he uses blue cheese, like the pun a lot. Mm -hmm. But then... We've actually done that one before. I wonder if you got that one right. Yeah. Since that was a Prince written song, I figured I'd bring it back for this to throw you off because you think there was only one Bob. Yeah. And you were like, oh, I didn't think about that. I could have done it. And I was like, oh, he wrote it. Mm -hmm. Darn it. Okay. You ready for your last one? Mm -hmm. Your last pun is... This is what it sounds like when cloves fry burger with fried garlic cloves. That sounds delicious. Some like garlic chips. I guess I'll just say you. It's Bob. Damn it. You were wrong. It was you the just complete opposite. To trick me. It was all Bob and then one Max as opposed to like yeah. just one Bob. They, they're they a very Prince heavy show. Show, I guess. I, I mean, rightfully so. All those songs are phenomenal. Prince is phenomenal. I feel like I would have... I'm so disappointed in myself. I came up with this rule, and instead of just, like, following my gut on each, I just didn't. I think it's okay. You can. You don't have to beat up on yourself for this. I'm sad. <laughs> let's, get, let's get into some, some Prince vibes. Okay. I don't know how Prince this episode actually is, other than... We'll, we'll get into it. It's music heavy. We'll get into it. Well, this this episode, this podcast episode has become very Prince heavy because of it, but should we get started? Yep. 
Skylar, can we have the title and synopsis for Season 4, Episode 6, please? Yes. The title is Purple Rain Union. Ding, ding, ding. When Linda's high school band, the Tatas, is asked to play at their 25-year high school reunion, she thinks it's their big chance to redeem themselves after bombing their talent show all those years ago. Bob doesn't want to attend, especially after a huge zit appears on his nose. Tina's pissed because once again, she's been passed over as babysitter in favor of our beloved monotone, Jen. This episode came out on December 1st, 2013. It was written by Lauren Bouchard and Nora Smith, directed by Tyree Dillahay. So is this like his third episode? Lauren Bouchard? Yeah. I think so. I think we've been trying to like monitor which ones he writes and it's been... I think we're still single digits. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. He only only pops in every now and then. Um, Anyway, the title, Purple Rain Union, is why we've been so Prince heavy. How do you feel about that pun? I like it. It's very like Bob's to me. It's not like an, you know, it's that. It's a stretch. It's yeah. The, it's, it's perfect for yeah. It's it's a pun Bob would have written on the board. Exactly. Um. So I like it. What do you think of this episode overall? I like this episode, and I I think, you know, anytime Gail and Linda are going to be in a rock band, like. I'm going to be there for it. And I love seeing a flashback to Linda being in high school. I think that's really fun. Um, And then the sleeper hit for me are the B story and the runner or the two side stories. I was shockingly delighted by Bob becoming popular because of his hit (laughs) um, at the high school reunion. Um, And I was... I mean, if Jen is in the episode, The Babysitter, it's going to be one of my favorite side stories. Listeners know how much Skylar and I love Jen, The Babysitter. She's up there for a top side character for us. Yeah. She, uh, Wendy Molyneux, the writer, uh, producer, does the voice for her. And anytime that character is on this show, it is hilarious. And the like inspirational speech she gives, um, Linda. Yeah, like, I, I'm, I'm not very good at this, but I'm not very good at babysitting. But <laughs> I have I do no it charisma yeah. with children, <laughs> but I do it for myself. <laughs> Should we listen to it? All right. Yeah, let's do it. She's but then Napoleon Dynamite esque. Totally. And I also have to say how much I love that she's very ticklish. Yeah. We, we learn so much about her every episode she appears in. And I love um, Tina's feather fingers. Linda, Linda, listen. Huh? Linda, what? listen. Huh? What? Linda. What, Jen? Your band is probably bad, but I don't let it bother me that I'm not a good babysitter. I have no chemistry with children. I don't know how to use a microwave. I don't know what bath time means, but I do it because I love it. Maybe you should think about that. Uh... <laughs> I love it. Tell me your favorite part of that because i have something very specific oh when she doesn't know what bath time means (laughs) (laughs) it's my favorite (laughs) it's the the most (laughs) (laughs) self-explanatory title for something (laughs) my favorite part is microwave microwave (laughs) use a microwave so good and i love that i i mean it's the it's that classic like um inspiring Rocky to go after his dream moment and and Jen the most passive character gets to be that person and I love that for her I yeah. love that journey and for then her. it's so funny when she gets to back to the reunion and Bob is trying to like she's like no Jen already gave me this speech and the kids already <laughs> gave me a speech something like that I didn't remember that that's great um so how overall how do you feel about the episode um I, I feel like we keep saying this but first watch eh. mm-hmm. second watch I love it so much more Again, Jen elevates it for me. Um, and I love the songs. There's so many good songs in here that kind of just you don't really get to pay enough attention to when you're exactly. just watching it one time through. Um, I just realized that it's my week to do notes and I did not make a list of all of the Tata songs. Well, I always have you covered, at least with some of the, with some of the lyrics and stuff. This is why we're the dream team. Yeah. Do you have a list of the songs? I don't have a list of all the songs, but I do have a list of, first of all, 
their bad hair day, their um, mm, arch rivals. nemesis. Yeah. Sisters, arch nemesis. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my Just, God. You're going to steal one of my fun facts, but I'm going to let you have tell it. Tell me. Bad Hair Day, yeah. they blow up, uh-huh. they become a successful band. Oh my God, Biscuit's wagging his tail in his sleep. Okay, <laughs> very important. It's so sweet. It's so innocent. He's having a little dream. A little dream yeah. about blueberries or something. Um, so the lead guitarist and the lead singer are voiced by... Uh, Laura Silverman and Sarah Silverman. Is that what you were going to say? No. Okay. But I did see that as I was looking this information up. Because okay. when you look at the song lyrics, it tells you who sings them. Uh-huh. So I saw that the Silverman sisters who do Andy and Ollie yeah. are, were also the, the voices for Bad Hair Day. And the song they sing at the when they show up at the reunion, uh-huh. do you know what it, it's called? No. So, so it's that's the, that's the beauty of this show. Like, you miss this. You really aren't paying attention because it's like background noise. The song they sing is called We Won the Talent Show. No. The entire song is about how they won the talent show. And it's like rubbing in that they became famous after that. And so here are some some of the lyrics. Okay. Uh, Got a PhD in rock and roll. Got an honorary doctorate and never getting old. My day job is staying up all night. My hobby is being impolite. My memory is my guitar. My friends are all my seven cars. I've done home runs with all my aunts. I've never had a menstrual cramp. Then the chorus is, but yeah, life's so great. We made lots of dough. We sleep all day because we won the talent show. Oh my gosh, amazing. Um, So that's their whole song is rubbing it in Linda's face pretty much. And it is total, we'll get into the Tata song that plays Uh in the end credits, but is pretty much like the uh, antithesis of that song itself and Linda, what Linda sings. Oh, I love that. But you know what? Are they truly happy just because they found success? They seem to be. You don't know that. Okay. You don't know that. They seem to be One in this song. One could have a drug problem. This is, here's some more lyrics from that song. Okay. Got a GED in being mean, looking at my horse and making it rain. My bachelor's in breaking stuff. My, associate, my associates in talking tough. I've never had to change my pants. <laughs> I've never moisturized my hands. I sleep with anyone I want. I own a mountain in Vermont. But here's the thing. I think my theory is actually true. They're not happy. Yeah, because if you're telling me that you have a uterus and you've never had a menstrual cramp, that's a lie. So this is just, this song's trying too hard. Oh, okay. You know, so maybe we should do a spinoff episode and and really see what their lives are like. Okay. A a little bit where we can follow the bad hair day and just see what's going on there. Linda's boobs may be sagging, as she says in, in the song that we'll listen to, but I think she's happy. It, I mean, the song is happy, and we'll get to that. I'm not talking about the song. Do you think Linda likes her life? Oh, I think Linda loves her life. She loves life, too. Yeah. yeah. Which I love about her. I think this whole family loves their life. That's what I love about them. Yeah. Well, and I think... Do they want the restaurant to be more successful? Yes. Do they want to make a little bit more money? Probably. But Would they, money solve a lot of problems? Definitely. But they all love each other and their lives. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm being really serious. Like, w- our our culture makes us believe that success and money equals happiness, and it doesn't. Like, look at all the – sorry, my therapist and I talk about this a lot. <laughs> look at all the rock stars who have um, OD'd or, you know, millionaires and billionaires commit suicide too. Um, it's just a false narrative. So what I love about Bob's Burgers is I think they're living a great life. <laughs> I, I really do. I agree. And it's this, a small thing. And this episode is ex- saying exactly that. I think it's exactly what they're aiming for. I did. I had no idea we were going to go so deep down this path. Can we pause for a moment? Because I, I do kind of want to look up the Tata's songs. Mm-hmm. Thanks to a little thing called the pause button. I have gone and looked up all of the Tata songs. Would you like to hear them? Please list them. We're the Tata's. Good song. You were all wrong about us. Oh boy, you all got so fat. Derek Demetopoulos, which... Great song. um, That is Gail's song, and um, it pays off in the end, as we'll see right before we go into the credits. Two out of five. 
two out of five Linda shower version and genitals. And then the classic, probably the number one single, Not Bad for Having Three Kids. All great song titles. And we're going to get into that last one in these end credits. But real quick, should I read the lyrics to Derek Dematopoulos? I, please. Okay. So it starts with Derek Dematopoulos. Your neck hair makes me weak. Won't you enter my Acropolis and make my yogurt Greek? <laughs> no. Derek. Derek. Let's you and me make a reunion. Derek. Derek. Let's you and me make a wee union tonight. It's tonight, a, a, tonight. Wee union. a wee union. Oh my gosh. Oh, Gail should write every song. Okay. This is a very talented musical family. It is. And and we'll see later. Gail puts on a one woman show. It's a creative family. And it, she manages to seduce the man of her high school dreams. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, also, I would like to say that the title, um, not bad for having three kids. It's actually not about her feeling bad about her body after having three kids. It's about owning it, even though you've had three kids. So Tata's rule, bad hair day drools. That's what I'm trying to say. Get out of here. Get out of here. Um, all right. I do have a few more fun facts. Okay. Hit me. Um, when we flash back to high school, what photo do you think is hanging in Gail's locker? Oh, interesting. Is it Derek? No. It is a picture of Tom Selleck. No, that's Linda. Who is it? A cat. Oh, okay. I love it. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. Now, a little fun fact for you. We see Linda in a fitness class in this episode, and there's three women doing a workout with her. Those three women are actually the three women who are in her Linda's pregnancy workout video tape um, in the episode Synchronized Swimming. Do you remember when she's like doing that pregnancy like yoga or workout? Yeah. Little fun fact. So now we know where she knows them from. Well, it doesn't make sense because they're in the video. Uh Uh-huh. And now they're in her class in New Jersey. Well, maybe the the studio was selling the yeah maybe the it was tape. yeah it was promoting it. And she was like, oh, I'd actually like to go into class there and meet these people. Or maybe they just had like the the <laughs> the uh, animation ready to go. <laughs> and they're like, what did you use this? Let's, yeah, <laughs> it'll make it so much easier. Now I have um, a little treat for you. Okay, I am ready. Have you heard of? The punk rock band Mom Jeans. No. It's a, it's a real, real thing. Okay. A real band. They have a song called um, Edward Forty Hands. Okay. I've played that. And they sample dialogue from this episode from the Tatas in their actual song. Okay. Do you want to listen to it? Sure. Okay. Wait, you were like, okay, I thought you'd be more excited I, that a I'm real excited. band uses Bob Berger's dialogue in it. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, let's listen to it. Woohoo! Sorry, it's just people were complaining. Too bad! They want to know if you guys can maybe try tuning up again or no. play on the beat and just do it right. No! And do they just play the clips like throughout the thing, throughout um, the song? I'm just going to be like real honest with yeah. you. I only listen to the beginning of the song. Okay. No, it sounds like it's just... At the okay. beginning. So it sounds like they just play it at the beginning. Yeah. To get into it because she says mom jeans. Yeah. So they're probably like, oh, that's our name. Let's put the clip in. I li- I loved it. And I kind of want to be like my 14-year-old like angsty self and listen to this and jump around in the living room Perfect. later. Just like me with the Derek Day Metopolis song. Um... All right. You ready for the end credits? Yep. Okay. Um, so the last moment is kind of like uh, the family's driving home from the u- the reunion, and they're wondering where Gail is. Oh. I wonder what happened to Gail. I guess she got a ride. Mm. <sighs> <sighs> ow, ow, ow. You're part of my neck hair. It's mine now. <laughs> 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 
This is down here, but it should be up there. This is kind of loose and I think it might tear. Okay, a lot happened there. I would just like to say that my first kiss was horrible when I was a teenager and that he kissed exactly like Gail kisses. So I just, I ha- I needed to get that out. Okay. Oh, that poor, that poor fellow. The poor fellow. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so we find out that Gail and Derek are going at it in the back seat of, I assume, Derek's car. Cause I don't think Gail has a car. No. And what happens right after that scene to get us into the credits? We cut to the credits, and it, we're not in the kitchen. No. In fact, the split screen is very different. Mm-hmm. It's kind of jarring. So we have the credits on on white at the bottom, and then we have a stage where the Tatas are performing their hit song. Not bad for having three kids. Um, I think this is the first time we get to hear this full song, or did they play it in the episode? I think they played it in the episode, too. Okay. It, you can hear the lyrics much better in this version, though. Yeah. Um, do you want to hit us with the, the first lyrics, or do you want to explain kind of what's going on? So the first shot is uh, a wide shot of the whole band on stage, and you can see some of the audience dancing, and then it immediately cuts to a close-up of Gail on her mic and the drummer, whose name I can't remember at this point. Right. We're going to do process of elimination. Um, So it's either. Oh, it is um, Angie Moscatone. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a soprano name. And then we have Patsy on bass guitar and Nancy on guitar. Okay, cool. Should we play a little bit more? Yeah. This is the bass. This is the game. When I bend down, I be a little bit. But it's not bad. Not bad for having three. There's a lot happening as far as uh, editing goes, I feel like. Yeah. So what were the the kind of like think, shots we see here? I think the shots we saw were like a wide shot of the band performing, close up on Linda and the drummer. Then we have a POV of behind um, Linda into the huge crowd um, of the high school reunion. They're having a great time. And then the most fun part, what happens next? The kids climb on stage with Jen. I want to see the details of this. Will you click play right here? Yeah. So the kids are all climbing up and Louise can't quite make it. She's too little. So Jen and uh, Jean offer a little hand and And pull Louise up. It's so cute. It's so cute. And, And we should say that Louise's whole thing is that she wants to be at the reunion to see her mom. Um, so they come up with this great scheme. Jen accidentally <laughs> punches Tina in the face, uh, because she's tickling her. Um, so they come up with this very childish sh- scheme that they should just all have black eyes and then no one will question anything. So they're driving to the reunion, um, is my point. So they end up at the reunion, which then we can kind of say that the credits are a continuation yeah. Of the episode. Yeah, that's one of these ones where it's we, we kind of like to figure out where the credits take place. But as... if they've already sung this song in the episode, is this an encore song? And yeah. They yeah, only it, have four songs. Yeah, it could be, it's exactly what it could be. Now, do the kids have black eyes? Because that's going to be a big deal to me. Oh, uh, that's a good question. When I bend down, I be a little bit, but it's not bad. No. no. We have no black eyes. So what does that due to our theory i mean i don't want to be harsh but like that might be a whole oh theory i was just gonna say you get a point knocked off oh the end credit wow we're, we're very strict on this podcast but the only logical theory so, yeah the only logical theory is that this takes place at the green that night so they should have the black eyes technically unless it's you know it could be um maybe they weren't this good is it linda's fantasy of how the night went there you go that could be it okay i'll give you that maybe and we're basing this all on the black eyes i'm i'm just going with the flow that's what i'm saying this is where we're breaking down these end credits is what we do on here and based on the lack of black eyes we've now moved on from an actual scene in the show in the in real life to Uh linda's fantasy can't you see, like, because the night goes way better than she thought. So, you know, when you're like on stage and it's like a great night or something and you come home and like you just relive it the whole night. Can't you see like Linda in the shower or 
or just dreaming about it. Okay, I I, I support that. It because reminds me it's of good. You know the episode of Always Sunny where they go to the high school reunion uh-huh. and they're performing, and this is incredible performance of uh to I think it's uh Faith by George uh-huh. Michael, uh-huh. and it's incredible. And then it cuts to like there's the very end. It cuts to <laughs> like what everyone else has seen, and it's the most it, it's, it's horrible. Awful. Yeah, everyone's all sweaty and gross and like off key and not dancing well. And <laughs> I I like this theory a lot. I'm liking it. And so, you know, I think she would want her kids there. Um, And she she wouldn't want them black eyed. No. She's not thrilled about that. She says something about her kids coming up. So let's listen to it. We'll continue with the theory then. Okay. I have a few questions that I wasn't able to yeah. figure out. Uh-huh. First of all, basically the kids get up and the kids start dancing. I think we need to go back and look at each. Kids dance moves. Yeah. I'm particularly interested in how Jen dances. Okay. I was watching Jen. Uh-huh. <laughs> of course I was watching Jen. And she kind of <laughs> just like um, pumps, holds her fists out forward kind of and pumps them like this. I, I, that's great for a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain what I'm doing? <laughs> It's like you're holding a towel in front of you. What would be a Your good... fists are pointing out towards the audience. It's like you got... Like you're doing a pull-up. Oh, yeah. yeah like you're doing a pull-up and she's like... But they're further out from your body. Alternating the hands up and down. And her knees are like pressed together and her hips are like... Well, let me go back side a to little side. bit here. She's punching one at a time. Yeah. So it's like an uppercut. It's like uppercut and uppercut. Okay. And Tina is doing... Okay, so, oh so T- Tina's got like her arms out, like a W, to the side. yeah, like a W, and she's doing palms like this, out. She's doing like this weird. She's like leaning towards each arm. I know what it is. What? It's a drunk starfish. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> watch it. Okay, tell me if I'm wrong. But how's that different than a? There's like, what would a sober starfish move like? They'd be very tight. Okay, she's and a drunk, a, she's a, a little loose. Okay, I gotcha. Drunk starfish, <laughs> my favorite dance move. Jean's doing like alternating. You've got to say what I'm doing because I don't know how to do it. You're going to make me do this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, because you're looking at me and I'm doing it. Okay. What would you call these? I mean, the image I'm getting is really not okay, to be honest. D- do it. It's it's a swastika. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Jean's doing the swastika. No, I'm just saying I was trying to visualize what it is. Um. Okay. So, you have... You're right because it's kind of like the... Yeah. the his you have, arms are shaping one half of a swastika. <laughs> it's like a running man, but to the side. Yeah. This and isn't then, helpful. Okay, you no. have the left arm in a 90 degree angle up and the right arm in a 90 degree angle down, and then he switches back That's and forth. That's so much better than a swastika. And then he starts like pumping one of his fists. He looks like he's doing the lawnmower kind of. Yeah. Just pumping one fist. He's really and going. into it. I like it. And Louise oh, is, my. let's see. I can't even describe what Louise is she doing. Is you go ahead. Full force into it, like just wild dancing. Like it, it, it is very appropriate for. Is she nine? Yeah. For a nine-year-old, Definitely. like she's going for sometimes, it and not self-conscious. Yeah. Sometimes she's so much more mature for her age. This is like in this in these end credits, her having to be lifted up by two older people, and then the way she's dancing shows her age. Exactly. Like she's still, like, she's, so still she's still a baby. Right. I love that about this. Right? And and she's still her mom's baby. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that's great. The only other question I have is I don't know what Gail says. I know what Linda says. She says what she is She says she says, um, not bad for having three kids and she says, or three cats. Your kid you yeah. were able to hear that? Yeah. Or three cats. Or three cats. And then Linda says uh, these are the ones from the song. The song's about them. These are the little ones from the song? These, these are the ones from the song. You've been watching way too much Sopranos. You were like, these are the ones from the song. These are the little ones from the song. The song's about <laughs> them. Hey, Gabagool. Um, do you want to hear the lyrics? <laughs> do I want to hear the lyrics? Okay, so there's a full version of this song. But in this one, it's uh, this is down here, but it should be up there. Mm-hmm. This is kind of loose, and I think it might tear. tear. This is lumpy. Yeah, it's lumpy. This is saggy, yeah, it's flabby. When I bend down, I pee a little bit, but it's not bad, <laughs> not bad for having three kids. Well, three cats. I love it. 
And those are the end credits to Purple Rain Union. Highlights, slow lights. Well, I didn't know that Gail was saying, or three cats. That's delightful. I'm going to put the fact that Jen made the end credits in my highlights. Anytime you can toss Jen in the end credits, it's going to bump up the points for me. 100%. This song is so good. Great song. Great lyrics. The end credits are so much better when you get to spend a little bit of time with them like we do. <laughs> Seriously. So much better. Like there's so many different things to watch in these end credits where you watch each kid and you can even watch anyone in the band and it's just great. And it makes you want to dance too. Like it just makes you happy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then any low lights for you? No, really. Like, I, I, you know what? My low light is that we can't figure out what the deal is with the black guys. That's my only issue. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where this takes place. And and how about it not being in the restaurant for you? That's always a bummer. But I think it works for this episode. Okay. All right. What are you, you going to score? It? Yeah. Okay. We score on a scale of one to 10 H's at the end of Tina's uh. uh. I am going to give this... A 9.25 H's. Interesting. I'm going to give it a 9.5. I think the lyrics of the song are so phenomenal. Agreed. I like that it made us... Um, I just had fun theorizing with you. And I, I think this might be in Linda's head. And I love uh, the little dialogue that's added. Yeah, I think I think it's in Linda's head too. Now that I'm looking at some of the images we have paused on the screen, and like the crowd is huge and cheering, also the lights and the lights. Yeah, it looks very professional. <laughs> so maybe it is in in Linda's head, and that's why the kids don't have black eyes. But this means that Jen is in Linda's head. Jen She's is. She's going to keep getting hired, just like mine. <laughs> Linda and I have similar fantasies. You literally just said, of course I'm looking at Jen like two seconds ago. And then you're like, she's in my head. I can't help but love her. I can't help but love her. But that's that. That's We've that. We scored it. Thank you everyone for listening. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Bob's Credits. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Bob's Credits. We have an exciting announcement coming up about Patreon soon. So keep listening. Yes, keep paying attention to that, please. Um, and you'll see that stuff on our socials and anything else we want to tell them to do we give we like to give you homework i'm just gonna say stay saggy stay flabby oh i like that yeah we'll see you guys next time (laughs) i don't know why i was saying that